Hello, I'm Corey, and today is day 12 of my 100-day project, which I'm calling Six by Six and Six. And today's project is brought to you by Lucy Van Pelt. Um, actually, it's brought to you by my friend Daryl Lynn, who gave me this Lucy Van Pelt. Daryl Lynn's had some recent changes, and she um, is moving in with her mom to help her mom out. And she's giving, getting rid of a doll collection that she's had for, gosh, since I've known her, and we became friends in middle school back when it was junior high. So I've known her for a long time, and she knows I have a peanut-stained classroom. And she sent me this beautiful doll, which I think was 1963, I think is what it says on her. So she's an older doll. And she sent it to me to put in my classroom. Well, I hate to break it to her, but this doll is not going to go to my classroom. I love my fifth grade students, but they're not gentle. So she is going to be my friend in my craft room. So I wanted to honor Darylin and what the, the how sweet it was that she sent that doll to me. So I... I we're just reimbursing her for some shipping and I wanted to send her a thank you gift card. She loves Starbucks as much as I do. And then write her a note letting her know how much I appreciate it. So as I was thinking about making her a card, I wanted to be able to include a photo because even though she, I mean, I don't even know how many years she's had that doll. I thought, um, you know, she might like to have a picture so I could put it on the back of this. It's just the six by six page to tuck it in her own photo album. So I thought, well, maybe I could just make a page and put the photo on the back and, and, and so I thought, how, well, that could work really well for both scrapbook albums and junk journals. Because some junk journals are smaller than this, especially if you do the traveler's notebook size. But many of our junk journals are a little bit bigger than this. For example, like, you know, this is this is a fairly standard size junk journal. And um, all, these, all these pages are full. But if I had a blank page in here, you could see, well, heck, I'll just put it down. See, it would fit nicely. And I'd have room up above and below for journaling or for anything else. And I, if I glue this in, I could even make a back tuck spot here. So I would have one, two, three pockets, and then a pocket in the back. So what I'm calling this is a flat triple pocket. So for today's title. And again, great for junk journals and great for um, scrapbooking. Also, I'm using it as a card, so there's no reason on earth it can't be used that way. Just wouldn't really be so much for a traveler's notebook. If you do happy mail, perfect happy mail. You could even put another one on the back and flip it up and, and have a triple pocket with flat. Just remember, if you are going to mail this, it's square, so you have to pay extra for postage because they have to hand cancel it. So this is what started the idea. And, oh, before I move on, I wanted to just say... A million years ago when I did stuff for different scrapbooking companies, I would make projects that I would never use because I was making it with their product for a specific reason, for a specific specific purpose. And I decided when I started doing this that I was only going to make things that I could actually use. And I'm making my sister, she doesn't watch these videos, so you're good, um, make her a Disney album because she and I have been to Disney World and Disneyland a couple of times and for her birthday this year I thought I'd just make her a Disney book so I've been some of the things you've seen already have been Disney related and so I um today's project is going to be Disney themed but the beauty of this and here let me show you the, the the my prototypes you can use it for anything if I use vintage paper it's for a vintage junk journal if I use modern hip paper it's modern hip if I use Disney paper, it's Disney themed. So you, a birthday, whatever, you can really make this with any theme that you want. And I've got two samples here because I wanted to show you sewn and not sewn. For the not sewn, I just inked up the edges and uh, glued down the, the three sides on all of those and glued it on top because this project uses four sheets of pattern paper, which I'll get to in a minute. And then with the sewn, I did it a couple different ways. I made one where the, the edge is sewn and then the edge is sewn. And it was just, it was too much. And I love sewing, the way sewing looks, but it was just too much. So instead, I just put dots of glue on the individual pieces and then I sewed each pocket separately to give it that look. And the nice thing here is whatever your embellishment choice, like if you wanted to use, in fact, for Dara Lens, I was I thought about using a doily and then it was, it competed too much with Lucy and it was the wrong feel. But if you were wanting to use you know, a doily. You can make whatever whatever collage or ephemera center you want here because you still have your pockets and even possibly a top pocket, so four pockets, but you can you have plenty of room to put something in the center, whatever that might be. So it's really versatile in that regard. All right, so 
for this project, I am going to use four pieces of paper. No, I don't have to, but I'm going to because the next two days projects are going to use the remainder of the sheets of paper. So I'm cutting up three different sheets for this project and then one sheet will be the background sheet. And then we're going to use the rest of those bits for over the next two days. So there you go. So another benefit of this particular project, what did I do? Oh, here we go with my, um, oh, before I get going, sorry, I want to tell you what you're going to need. You need either a circle punch if you want to make these divots. And I mixed it up today and I used um, my oval cutter simply because I've done everything else with circles. And so I thought, well, why not? I'm going to show people they can use their oval punch or their oval thing. Now on my prototypes, just here's a quick tip before I get started. This is really thin music sheet paper. And when I cut these, if you were going to use a punch or even with this, sometimes it's just too thin and it it doesn't punch correctly or bite correctly, just put a piece, a scrap of copy paper behind it to make it thicker and you'll get a beautiful cut. So there's there's a tip before I start. So I need a, um, a cutter of some sort, whether it's an oval cutter or a circle cutter or a punch. I'm going to need a paper trimmer. I need wet glue. I always need wet glue. Um, and paper. You need your four sheets of paper. Again, four sheets, one for the back, because, and then you're layering three different sheets on top. And so that's my reason. And then you can embellish it if you want to, though I, again, promised not to focus on the embellishment rather than rather focus on the construction. So four sheets of paper. And this is a great project for your one-sided paper, but this happens to be double. But it's also a great project if you have one that has an image that you don't necessarily want to use. But this is a really cute image. I mean, who doesn't love... Cinderella's Palace or whichever this is. Um, but I don't want it taking up that much real estate in my album, so I can use it for this project. It'll make a great background. And then I got three sheets of paper. And again, this is double-sided, but I just got three sheets of six by six that coordinate. And you are going to make three, you're gonna cut three different pieces. So the first one, whichever one you want for, here, I'm gonna use Lucy. Um, whichever one you want for this long piece, that is cut um, uh, vertically, sorry, long way, vertically at two and a half inches. And, and the reason I'm cutting it with these dimensions is so that if you're wanting to make this a gift pocket or you're wanting to put gift cards in here, you have room. So your first cut, your long, your long cut is going to be two and a half inches. And I think I have decided I'm going to use this one for my long cut. So I'm going to make that at two and a half inches, which is 6.3 centimeters. Okay. And then I'm going to tuck this extra piece aside for the next two days of this project. Okay. So there's one sheet. And then these next two sheets, you need a piece that is three and a half inches by three inches. So I am going to, um, cut this at three and a half inches, which is nine centimeters. and tuck my extra sheet away for the next day. And then I've got to turn it again and cut it at three. So this one is three and a half inches wide, but it's going to be three inches for the pocket, which three inches is 7.6 centimeters. And again, I've got an extra sheet for the next day. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, if my paper were directional, um, Obviously, I would have to take that into account as I was cutting it, but this is not directional, so I can, well, the other side was, if I were using this side up, I'd want to make sure it was cut, because I'm going to take my divot out here, and it's going to go down like this. So, and this, I'm not using this side, I'm using the other side, so it doesn't really matter for this one. Uh, so, and I'm going to cut this, the second piece, or actually the fourth piece, the second of this size, at the exact same thing, three and a half and three okay and then my cuts are done I'm done with cutting and I'm gonna lay it out so you can see what I'm talking about so I'm gonna have my background piece which is going to be essentially covered and then I've got um, one piece at three and a half inches and I liked that side one piece at three and a half inches and that's that's all the cutting I do and now it's all construction I am going to use my um, oval trimmer here so that you can see what I'm talking about. But, um, oh, purple tape. 
you always have purple tape on hand. I, can you see that? Am I in frame? Let's see if I move in. So I'm gonna use my purple tape to hold it in place while I cut it. And again, I'm gonna use my grid to make sure that I've centered this. Now I'm using, uh, for the side pieces, I'm the, the double divots, I'm gonna, or notches, I'm gonna use the inside. But for this one, I wanna use the outside because as you can see on the Lucy card, this one's a little larger just because I wanted to be able to take the card out. And here I don't need a, as quite as big of a divot, so I'm gonna use the inside. But you can use your oval templates. You can use anything that's shaped like an oval or you can go back to the circles. Any way it'll work. So I'm gonna use the outside and then I'm gonna use the grid lines on here to line it up so I can get the amount of notch or divot that I want. I'm going to hold it down, make sure it's centered so I have equidistant um, uh, pieces on the side. And I took off my divot and I'll put that aside. Okay, so here, is my piece that's going over here. And I didn't, I should have paid attention to it. If I had cut this too deep, it could have maybe shown my background, but it didn't. And I'm not gonna have deep divots on these pockets. So it definitely won't show the background here. Something to keep in mind too, make sure when you cut it, you don't turn it long way. You, you, you wanna cut the shorter side, the three inch side, as opposed to the three and a half inch side. And generally what I do is I cut them both at the same time because um, they're not already glued down. If it's something that you're having to take um, notches out later on after it's already in place, well, this one's not. So I can cut them both at the same time and, and verify that they are uh, the same size. So let's see, I think I liked the way that looked. So I'm going to again line up on my grid in the background to make sure that my my pockets are centered or my divots, notches are centered. And I am going to cut those up. Okay, and I've got those little bits of scrap I'll put over here. And I'll reuse my washi tape, or my purple tape. Okay, and that is essentially it. Now, I showed you one here, I'll, I'll assemble it for you. So this is going to be, and you, you can flip it like this if you want. You can have your long pocket on the right. You can have your long pocket on the top, be on the long pocket on the bottom, any, any which way works. I just happen to like it like this. So I am going to do it like this. And that's it. Now the sewn piece, I just I glue them slightly differently depending on how I'm gonna use them. Oh, I don't want that. The sewn piece, um, I just put a dot of glue like in three spots on each piece before I glue it on because I don't wanna gum up my sewing machine. So if I were to, if I were going to sew this one in place, I would just put a couple dots of glue on. If I am going to glue the pocket down, then I'm gonna put glue all along those three edges and glue it down. And of course, I'm going to ink it first. But you know what, I just realized I am using these as um, pages for when I put my sister's gift album together. So I'm gonna look at some of the other things I've made that are gonna go inside this album in previous day's project of this 100 day project. Like here, I didn't use any stitching on that. And then this double flap insert, I didn't use any any stitching on that. And then this booklet, I did sew down here, but that's in the back. So the front of the booklet, and I'm gonna add a Disney dangle that I got, which is really fun. I'm gonna add a Disney dangle here. I didn't use for the journaling, I didn't use any sewing on there. And this long reverse envelope pocket, there's no sewing. And this tiny little no sewing, and I, I did stitch right here. So I could use stitching and I did stitch right here. And then this one I didn't show you when I made the um, library pocket. I made a Disney sample also because I wanted to include that. And there's no sewing here. So I don't think I'm going to sew this one. I think I'm just going to glue them down. And I highly recommend if you're going to glue it down, ink first. Ink all the way around the edges if you're going to ink. I think it separates the pieces and gives it a little bit more definitive look. But... Um, that's completely up to you. I am. I usually reach for black, but Vintage Photo is another one of my favorites, and Walnut Stain. It's probably the one I use the most if I'm using, if I'm using um, heritage style or older style um, paper or projects products. So I'm going to ink around all of the sides on this. And 
the same thing for this one. Ink it all and let it dry, and it doesn't take but seconds to dry. Sorry if that sounds annoying, I apologize. All right. Four sides inked. If you're a heavy inker, ink more. If you're a light inker, ink less. It'll all work. Okay, now my glue. Again, this is my background. I don't know why. I'm going to be a rebel and turn it upside down. Okay, I'm going to put glue on just the three outside edges. I don't want to put it on the notch part. And it's easier, I think, to lay it down. Can you see that? Yeah. And I just want a really thin line of glue. I'm not putting anything super heavy in here. For this Disney book that I'm making my sister, I will probably put um, one of our tickets, maybe a receipt, maybe a food receipt. Um, you know, those passes you get, the magic passes or the fast passes, I guess they're called, to um, so you don't have to wait in line so long. And then I'm just going to line this up here and here. Um, you know, the tag on maybe a shirt or a sweatshirt or something that we bought, I might tuck that in there. A note that uh, um, we stayed at the Grand Californian the last time we went, and um, and they gave us little notes and things on our beds, and so I might tuck those receipts in. We went to downtown Disney, and we got receipts there. So maybe I would just tuck, use all of these pockets to tuck different memorabilia inside. I love authentic memorabilia. I'm... All memorabilia is cool, but authentic memorabilia of things that you've actually done and memories of your trips um, are even better. So I'm going to line that up. Oh, darn it. You see? Look, it's off just a smidge. It's okay. I can go back in and trim that up. And I'm going to do the same thing on this last sheet. I, you can see I'm just using a small amount of glue. If I were putting something heavier in, I'd use a bit more glue, but this will hold definitely for what I want it to do. And line it up. Put it down. See, I trimmed this because these were six by eight sheets. So I trimmed it and you can see, obviously I didn't trim it perfectly, but that is such an easy fix. I'll just take my paper trimmer And come in here and just, I mean, it's not even eighth of a, an inch. It's, it's just a smidge, for want of a better word. And then I'll come back in and ring that side where I trimmed it down. And the, I'll give those edges where I hadn't inked it, give those edges a little bit of ink. And it just, like I said, it just makes it stand out a little bit more. And now I have options. I can put, oh, that's too big, so I wouldn't use this one. But... You can now play with it and embellish it. A lot of times when you buy paper pads, you get some of these bigger images. Well, these are great for for this piece. If you, you know, maybe I want to use happiest place on earth, but maybe I don't want to say family fun, or maybe I don't want to say magic. I can use the opposite side, which is really a nice benefit to that. Um, so I can take some of the little ephemera bits or the little cutout bits and decide, you know, how I want this to look. Oh, maybe that's a little too busy, but maybe I like it. And so I can just kind of, kind of play around. Sorry, I didn't mean to bump that. I can play around a little bit because this whole center is, um, free. I'm going to tuck the things on the side and probably something long or larger in the back. And I can, uh, use this flat ephemera. Again, I've said a lot of times my journals get way too chunky. And this is a good way to make it not so chunky. So maybe I'd do something like that. And since I have you here and I have it in front of me, I'm going to show you something I used to do um, a long time ago in the scrapbooking world. I'm going to zoom in for this and we'll put this out here. Okay, so you've got a sentiment that you want us. We're both above 50, so you know this fits for us. You're never too old to wish upon a star. And so maybe I want. I don't want to put a picture in here because I think that might be too busy, but I want to put these words in here. And you know, this was a cutout from another piece, but oh, it doesn't quite fit. So what you can do is use the natural lines in the image and cut it at the natural line, wherever the natural line might be. And then I could glue this down right on top of this. And I can glue this down to exactly the size I want. And I have taken an existing frame and made it into a new, oops, I moved it, sorry. And made it into a new frame that says what I want it to say. So there you go, there's my, my tip of the day. 
I hope this helped you in some way, shape, or form. Please, I'm Corey Marcher Doman on Instagram. If you make something, I'd love to see it. Share it with me, hashtag me or what have you, and I'll be able to see it and respond. And thank you for visiting. I look forward to seeing you the next couple days. Bye.